Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup present Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host, Raymond, the gay goo. Friends, would you like to... uh... Fly through the air with the greatest of ease. Do you think you'd enjoy being invisible, huh? <laughs> oh, it's easy. All you have to do is become a ghost. And to become a ghost, all you have to do is accentuate the ectoplasm and eliminate the protoplasm. Man! If that doesn't work, we'll introduce you to one of the characters on our show. He'll take care of you. And that's the truth. What awful people on this show. Wherever do you find them, Mr. Raymond? Well, it's simple. All you have to do is turn over a rock and out they come crawling. Hmm. And just suppose you were looking for decent people. How would you find them? Oh, well, now, Mary, you were the one who showed me how I'd just go snooping around houses and peering into windows. And I'd find all the nice people drinking Lipton tea. Oh, dear. There you go making fun again. You know, maybe if you drank Lipton tea, you wouldn't be such a bitter, unhappy person. Yes, there's something so warming and cheerful about Lipton. I guess that's why lots of folks drink it not only at mealtimes, but between meals. Or whenever they get a chance to sit down and enjoy Lipton's famous brisk flavor. Mm -hmm. That word brisk, B-R-I-S-K, explains a lot when it comes to tea flavor. Brisk means that Lipton tea always tastes tangy and, and bracing. It's never flat or wishy-washy. That's right. You just don't know how good tea can be till you know how good Lipton's is. All right, Mary. Um, As long as you're in the kitchen, you'd better sharpen up a couple of knives, as our main character tonight is going to use them. A story is called Song of the Slasher. It's an original radio play by Milton Lewis and stars Arnold Moss in the role of Detective Dan Miller. Are you, uh, ready? Then uh, gather close and listen. If you find you're getting too many chills and just sit in a fire, huh? <laughs> a thick, murky fog hangs like a damp veil over the waterfront. The streets are deserted. The buildings loom like tombstones in a cemetery. No living soul can be seen. Because people with sense stay behind locked doors. The slasher has murdered and mutilated his fifth victim in eight days. In a drab, lonely little room, a young woman suddenly looks up when she hears a door close. Well? Well, what's the matter? Can't you speak? Hey, you, get away from me. Get back up. That knife. What are you doing with that knife? You're that slasher. Help! Help me, someone! It's the slasher! Help! Hello, police headquarters. Hello, it, it it's the slasher. What are you talking about? He's here. Twelve doctors. He's upstairs. Mister Nell's apartment. I can hear it screaming now. He's with her. I go upward. I, I am. I'm an old man. It's the slasher. He's killing her. Hello, Sergeant Miller. Speaking. This is Captain Quinn, headquarters. Here's the chance you've been waiting for. The slash is at 12 Dock Street, right around the corner from you. On my way, Captain. Bye. And that's how it started. A detective was asked to do some queer things in the line of duty. I didn't mind moving down to the dump at the waterfront with my wife, if it would help catch the slasher. So when I got the call, I rushed out of my joint and beat it down to 12 Dock Street. Oh. oh. Where is he? Where'd he go? He. He. Listen, I. I. Oh, don't do that. I'll get you a doctor. I. Uh, and uh, listen to me, sister. Don't know her name is. Are they going to send an ambulance? Yeah, yeah, but it won't do her no good. You were too late. Did you see the guy who did it? I saw nobody. It can't be far. He was here a minute ago. I heard someone go out the back way. When? A minute ago. Listen. It's coming from that alley down there. 
Fog's so thick you can't see two feet ahead of you. The back way goes into the alley. Well, then... Then it's him. The slasher. I got down to the alley, the radio cars and the men from the precinct were coming. We went through that neighborhood with a sieve. But we couldn't find the guy who whistled that queer tune. Is that you, Danny? Yeah. Oh. What happened? Well, you shouldn't have got out of bed, baby. I was worried. He got away. Did he kill another? Yeah, yeah, another dame. It wasn't so foggy I could have seen him. That's how close it was. Any clues? No, nothing to speak of. Hey, look, look, baby, don't you worry about this. You go back and get some sleep. I'm frightened, Danny. That man is somewhere in this neighborhood and us living here. I shouldn't have brought you down here. You're going back to our old place tomorrow. No, I'm not. I don't want you here alone, and I want to stay with you. Shut up. Danny. Listen. What? You hear that, don't you? That ain't something I'm hearing in my head, is it? Danny, what are you... Answer me, answer me. I want to make sure I ain't hearing things. Well, of course I hear it. It's someone whistling, but why are you acting like this? He, the... The slasher whistles that tune. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I heard him tonight. Then the killer... The slasher must be somewhere around here. I'm going out, baby. Lock the door. The whistling was somewhere in the building. I listened. Where was it coming from? gone. I looked at my watch, 4.30 in the morning. I walked down the stairs listening for the whistle. I I walked on my toes, listened at the other flats. I didn't hear a thing. I went down into the cellar. There was someone there, all right. Oh, who's there? It was Sykes, a janitor. I came closer. Oh, Oh, it's... You, Mr. Miller. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Sykes. Hey, what's the matter? You're you're shaking like you got a fever. You you frightened me. Why? I thought you were the slasher. Yeah? He's around here, you know. He might be hiding in these shadows. Might be anywhere. Everybody's afraid of him. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, so I hear. Uh, time did you come down here? 4.30, like I do every morning. Why? See any stranger in the building? No, I didn't see anyone. Who lives in the flat below us? Mr. Trevelyan, Reginald Trevelyan. Funny name. He's a funny fella. Never sleeps at night. Wanders around the building whistling to himself. Whistling to himself? Yeah, he writes music or something. He got a piano in his place today. He talks crazy sometimes. Think he's up there now? Yeah, he never sleeps. Here. Twenty dollars? Yeah, yeah, it's for you. Why are you giving this to me? I want you to tell me when Mr. Trevelyan leaves his apartment. Do you get it? Yeah, but... But why? I ain't paying you twenty bucks to ask questions. (laughs) Mr. Miller. Yes? What is it, Mr. Miller? My wife and I live upstairs. I know it's kind of late, but, uh, can I come in here for a minute? Of course. Hope I'm not disturbing you. No, it's quite all right. You the people who moved in a few days ago? That's right. Glad to know you. My name is Reginald Trevelyan. Dan Miller's mine. You been up all night? Yes. Why do you ask? Well, because maybe you can help me. Someone tried to break into our place at about 4.30 this morning. Really? Mr. Miller, you think your wife would be very annoyed if I play the piano now? No. No, I don't think so. She, uh, she likes music. Does she? She seemed like a charming girl. 
I noticed her when you first moved in. You're very lucky to have such an attractive wife. You, uh, you whistle to yourself like that very often? Yes. Especially when I'm working on a new composition. Wait a moment. I think I have it. I've been trying to work out that passage all night. Mr. Miller, please get out of here. I want to be alone. You're a query, you are. I'm not interested in your opinion. Well, what are you waiting for? Get out of here! Get out of here! Try it. I've lost it. What, what? That passage. You see what you've done? I had it a minute ago, and now it's gone, gone. It's how it's been lately. I keep forgetting things. I'm sorry if I was rude to you. I didn't mean to be. Mr. Miller. Good night. Mr. Miller. Is it really true what it says in the papers about the slasher? That he has the whole neighborhood trembling in terror? Yes. Lovely. Trembling for their miserable little lives. Worried about their dirty little souls. Shivering in fear in their ugly little rat holes. If I knew who the slasher was, I'd embrace him and give him every penny I have. Why? Because I hate them. Because they laugh at me. Because... Phone headquarters told them to check on Trevelyan. Oh, he was a queer one, all right. So queer, I didn't tell Laura about him. I didn't want to scare her. Couldn't arrest him. I didn't have anything on him yet. I lay down to rest. Maybe I heard it in my dream. Maybe not. But I heard that whistling again. That same tune. I think that's what woke me. I looked around. Laura. She was gone. And the door was open. Daddy! Daddy, help! Help! I rushed out. The hall was filled with thick fog. In the yellow light, I saw a crumpled heap on the floor. I recognized Laura's bathrobe. The slasher, that's my boy. He's not the type of low character who goes around murdering his friends and relatives. No, he's so big hearted he murders anyone. Even people he's never introduced to. He's no snob. Snob? He's much worse than a snob. He's a lunatic. Oh, Mary, you're so unsympathetic. He's just lonely. He wants to get close to people with a knife. Well, if he's so lonely, then why does he go around cutting people? You see, Mr. Raymond, I can say the same kind of things you do. Don't you dare just be your sweet, practical self, or else... You can't frighten me, Mr. Raymond. But as a matter of fact, I do have something practical to say. I'm going to suggest that all the folks who drink Lipton tea should buy the larger, more economical size packages. Not only because they're thriftier, but for another reason. You see, if you have a large package of Lipton's at home, then you're not likely to run out just when you need it. For instance, when folks happen to drop in unexpectedly some evening. And, of course, Lipton's is a grand drink to serve your guests. It goes so well with cake or sandwiches. It, it, it just seems to make everything taste better. So, folks, be sure to have a good supply of that brisk Lipton tea on hand. Yeah, I'll do that. And uh, while you're at it, be sure to have an extra hand on hand, because the slasher may want to collect one for a uh, souvenir. <laughs> Well, we've kept the blood from flowing long enough. On with the murders. Listen as we hear Arnold Moss as Dan Miller finish that story. Laura was alive in a dead faint. I scooped her up in my arms and rushed her back to our flat. She opened her eyes a few minutes later. 
understand. You're okay, baby. He was going to kill me. Yeah, yeah. Drink some of this. Uh, thanks. Oh, Danny, it was awful. What happened? Well, you were asleep. I, I went out to get the milk, and I heard someone whistling. Do you remember what? That same queer melody we heard before, the one the slasher whistled. So I thought I'd help you. Help me? I thought I'd see him. I walked quietly down the hall, and there was no one there. Then I turned the corner. Yeah? I saw the knife gleam. Someone was hiding in the shadows. He grabbed my neck, and I screamed. I screamed, Danny. I, I screamed so I thought I'd burst my throat, and then it all went black. Did you see him? No, but I felt his hands on my throat. They were strong hands, fingers like steel, and I... Oh, Danny, I'm sorry. I, I can't even talk about it. I... Now, now, lie down, lie down. You'll be all right. But when you think that he's right here, maybe living in this building... Well, he won't be here long. I'm calling headquarters. You know who he is. I got a good idea. Now, just let me get on that phone and... Oh, Danny, maybe that's him. Now, take it easy. Take it easy, kid. Oh. Who's there? Sykes. That's just a janitor, baby. Oh. What do you want? He went out. Trevelyan? Yeah. Okay. Laura, get dressed. I want to get you out of here before the trouble starts. I'll be going for a few minutes. Where are you going? With Mr. Sykes. You got a key, Sykes? Yeah, but I'll have to go along with you. You, you can't take anything. You know what this badge means? You a detective? Yeah, yeah. Now, let's go. What are you doing here? Looking for the slasher? I'll write your book about it, pal. Well, here's his joints. Open the door. All right. But you'll have to hurry. He may come back any minute. All I want is enough evidence. I'll take care of him when we get it. The door's open. Come on in. It was eight in the morning. But it could have been eight at night. The fog was so thick. I knew this was it. I couldn't take any chances. I had to get all the evidence on him before I nabbed him. And I had to get it without him being wise. What are you looking for? Knives. We know he's got at least three. I don't see none. Well, neither do I. Maybe it's a bum steer. I could be wrong. Hey, 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 what's this? Music. He's always writing it. I used to be a choir boy once. They taught me how to read them notes. I wonder if I still can. Why? Uh, because I think this may be a tune I'm looking for. Well, let me see. That, that song. Did you ever hear it before? Yeah. I bet you did. He's always whistling it. I heard it myself when he killed the last one. You gotta find those knives. You better hurry. I think he just went out to get some breakfast. I looked everywhere. Couldn't find the knives. I couldn't bring a guy in just because I heard a song. I found a bunch of keys. They were trunk keys. But there was no trunk. I think I hear him coming. Never mind what you think. Where does he keep his trunk? In the storeroom in the cellar. He's always going down there for things. Hold it, hold it. That's him. Yeah. Come here. There's room behind this upright piano for both of us. What, the piece to shut up? Shut up. Get behind here and hurry. He sat down at the piano and played a queer arrangement of the same tune that led me to him. I reached for my gun just in case. Suddenly, I felt the sweat ooze out of me. It was sweat that, that felt like ice. I didn't have my gun. I remembered I took it off when I laid down to rest. It's all wrong, all wrong. And I get it right. He's going out again. Come on, Sykes. I told you to hurry before. I hear him going down those stairs. It's, it's safe to go now. All right, Sykes. We're going to open that trunk in the store. Here's his trunk, Mr. Miller. This key should open it. Are they the knives? Yeah, the knives. Look at them, look at them. Covered with blood. Gee. Sykes, go to the police precinct. Tell them Miller sent you. Tell them to come over here with as many men as they can spare. All right, all right. I took the knives and put them under my coat. Went up to my room. <laughs> Yes, 
I'm leaving. I'll be home soon. I could hear Laura talking on the phone to someone. I opened the door. Oh, of course. I... Oh, I'd better hang up now. Danny just came in. Goodbye, darling. Who are you talking to? Mother, I'm... I'm ready to go. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's no rush. Listen, Danny. It's that man at the piano. Sounds like the slasher song. Yeah. What have you got there? My gun. Come on, baby, we're going. That man playing the piano. Are you sure he's a slasher? Yeah. Positive. Oh, Danny, you're hurting my arm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little nervous. Oh. That's his place. Come on in with me. Come in with you? Yeah. Yeah, I figured out a way to trap him. But, Danny, I... Don't be scared, baby. You'll be okay. Oh. It's you. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Trevelyan. I... I'd like you to meet my wife. I'm delighted. How do you do? Would you like to hear something? It's a composition I've just completed. I've had a great deal of trouble with it. But I think I've got it right now. <laughs> Yeah, you got it coming to your slasher. Do you? Stupid swine. You idiot. Why did you give me a chance? My music got even written down. Danny. You murdered him. Yeah. Why? You'll find out. What are you going to do with that knife? That's one of his knives. Stand still, Laura. Danny, do with me. In a minute. Danny, what's the matter You'll with you? You're it coming to you, too. Danny! I know who you were talking to on that phone. It wasn't your old lady. What? It was Jerry Boyd, that guy who lives next door, wasn't it? Answer me, wasn't it? No, no. Lie to me. So this is why you made me come down here with you. You planned this all along. That's right, baby. And that's why I had you insured for 40 grand. Oh. You made one bad mistake. You married a smart cookie. You're going to kill me and blame it on the slasher. Yeah. No! Help me, someone, help me! Daddy, don't! don't. Oh. When it was over, I wiped the knife clean of fingerprints. And then I, I smeared Trevelyan's hand over the handle. I knew what to do. Made it look good, made it look perfect. There's a way to get away with murder. And I found it. I thought. Go on with the report, Noah. Well, Captain Quinner, after I sent Sykes to the precinct, I went upstairs for my gun... My wife wasn't there, and got the gun, and I heard a scream. I rushed to his place. I opened the door. I, I saw Laura. The second I thought I'd pass out. Yeah? He, he grabbed a knife and come at me, and I shot him and killed him. <gasps> oh, Laura. She was insured for $40,000, wasn't she? Yeah. 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 Well, what difference does that make now? A lot of difference, fella. I want you to meet someone. Come in, Sykes. Yes, Captain. Did you hear Detective Miller's report clearly? Yes, sir. Was he telling the truth? No. He lied. Who are you talking about? I didn't go to the police when you told me. I hid in the cellar. I saw you go upstairs. I saw you get your wife and go to Trevelyan's place. I listened at the door. I heard you shoot Trevelyan and then murder your wife. Captain, the man's insane. Yes, Miller. A homicidal maniac. I'll take away his coat. You see? He's handcuffed. I don't get it. He's the slasher. He? It's impossible. I told you about that melody. Why, it's still on Trevelyan's piano. Trevelyan copying down that melody after he heard Sykes whistle it. Yeah. I whistled the whole thing for him. But the knives I found in Trevelyan's trunk. I put them there. I know who you were. Sykes was trying to frame Trevelyan. He's made a complete confession, Noah. But how did you find out when that When you he... asked us to check on Trevelyan, we discovered that he's quite a famous, if eccentric, composer. I checked up on the other people in the building at the same time. 
I found out that Sykes escaped from the State Institute for the Insane two years ago. He's confessed. Yeah. I'm the slasher. Why should Trevelyan become famous for what I'd done? You had a perfect crime all figured out, Miller. But you made one little mistake. You decided the wrong person was the slasher. Even a copper can't pull a perfect one, Miller. So I'm telling you all this because in ten minutes I won't be able to tell nobody anything. Ever since I made my report, I've been been hearing that song in my head. Like like somebody whistling it. Soon I I, I won't hear that either. It's a nice tune. Kind of sad. The uh, moral for tonight's story is never quarrel with your wife. Avoid strife. If that doesn't work, get a carving knife. <laughs> Now, there's the perfect formula for domestic bliss. Don't you think so, Mary? I do not. Oh, well, then I'll give you another one. You'll love this one. Beat her till she's black and blue. Break her arms and legs in two. Then tell her to brew a cup of Lipton tea for you. (laughs) Oh, I give up. All I can hope is that folks don't pay any attention to all these peculiar things you say about Lipton's. And I guess they don't. The proof is that more people drink Lipton tea than any other brand. But if any of you folks haven't tried Lipton's, then why don't you do so now before Mr. Raymond says a word more about it? Why not let that famous brisk flavor speak for itself? Well, now, if you weren't too caught up by tonight's story, let me tell you about next week's gory little tale. It's, uh... About a beautiful woman who holds your hand, tells you about the future. Of course, she's kind of pessimistic. She sees a man with a knife stuck in his throat, the girl waving gaily from the gallows. And listen to this. Our star will be the glamorous motion picture actress, Wendy Berry. Let's make it a day now. Oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery novel is The Lucky Stiff by Craig Rice. And now I guess it's really time to close that squeaking door until next week, the same time, when Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup bring you another Inner Sanctum Mystery directed by Hyman Brown. So until then, good night. Listen, dream time. <laughs> Folks, if you'd like to try a modern food with a real old-fashioned flavor, then try Lipton's Noodle Soup. You see, Lipton's comes in an envelope, and all you have to do is empty the contents into boiling water, and in no time at all, soup's on. And what a delicious, chickeny-tasting soup it is. It really tastes homemade, and it's brimming with golden, tender egg noodles. Lipton's is economical, too. It costs less and makes more than canned soups. So, folks, don't forget to try Lipton's Noodle Soup. And don't forget to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 